Hi folks, uh, for episode two, um, we're going to discuss running jet divers in conjunction with body baits, in conjunction with worms. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me how I am running all of those together at higher speeds. So we're going to go through that and explain what we do and how we do it to keep, number one, from getting tangled, uh, to keep spinner harnesses from blowing out, and I'll explain what blowing out means, um, and how we can run them at faster speeds. So uh, first we're gonna talk about rods. So I run uh, 14 mono rods, and I run 20 pound uh, Berkeley Big Game. Um, that's more than the Precision app, but to be honest with you, it does not affect the depth of the bait very much at all. Um, I have found that, you know, I, I don't really change the depth that the app shows me. Um, it's working great and I'm getting a lot more life out of my line. It's not affecting my fish catching at all. Um, so I'm very happy with it. I have uh, had way less break offs with that line um, than anything else that I've used uh, ever. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with that, it's working great for me. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how you set up lines. So if you're running jets in combination with body baits, uh, deep diving body baits, you run the deep diving body baits farthest away from the boat. So uh, unassisted, uh, no, non-weighted will go the farthest away. If you're weighting them, they would go next, um, and then your jets would go closest to the boat. So, you know, an example would be if you're running three bandits, you might be at 100 farthest away, 90, 80. So th those would be your three coming back towards the boat. Then let's say you're gonna run another three jets. They might be at, so your deepest would be the farthest jet. So you'd be at 50, 40, 30 if you're, if you're you know, running the depth. So the shallowest jet will be closest to the boat. Uh, that's how I run them. I don't get tangles running them that way and that works great now you will get two different lines uh with your board you're not going to get all six of them in a perfect row it's not going to happen the jets are pulling way harder than the deep diving baits so those boards are going to be lagging farther behind so you'll have a row of your three body baits out there though you'll have those in a nice line and then you're going to have a step back to your jets and then those you can run in a line and they'll be consistent in a line as well so you'll kind of have two lines um, that's just the way it's going to work if, if you run them like this um, so i choose um, a specific jet for a specific reason that that i run with my spoons and it is the uh walker trip z diver trip z uh, as in zebra and uh, I've chosen it because it does not pull as hard as the true trip divers and it really works a lot better uh, behind the offshore tackle boards the true trips really pull hard you can pull them behind a board I've done it um, but it really makes them a little bit more difficult to read and the uh, dream weaver walker trip z diver uh, seems to be the perfect combination uh, to run behind offshore tackle planer boards. Uh, they trip just like a true trip. They're very similar. They have the mechanism just like a dipsy diver. Um, I do not like the jets that do not release. Um, I don't use those. I don't prefer them. That has a rattle, a good rattle. Um, they do have four holes on the bottom and I just chose the second hole uh, from the release and I just duplicate all of them exactly the same. Um, consistency is important. Uh, th this is just gonna change maybe your depth and how you how you pick it. Just pick a hole that you're gonna put all of yours at. I, I just recommend doing them all the same. I pick the second one up from the release and I just put them all there and that's how I run them. Um, this, this jet diver does great behind a board. Uh, leaders. I run um, Vanish 20 pound fluorocarbon. Um, that's what I use for all of my leaders on my Dipsies, uh, my 50 jets, my 40 jets, 
uh, this is what I'm using for leader material. Works great, lasts a long time. I've had very good luck with it. Um, I am running five foot leaders. Uh, they work good. I have seven foot rods, so that keeps me a little shorter than the rod, uh, which helps for netting, especially with inexperienced anglers, which I get a lot of on my boat. If you are fishing with the same group of guys all the time and you guys are getting pretty good at it, you can run a little bit longer leader. Um, I don't recommend going too much longer than your rod. It just gets difficult to net. Um, on my leaders, I run a snap swivel on the jet end or the diver. The diver end, doesn't matter what kind of diver it is, whether it's a jet, a dipsy, um, a tadpole. I always run the... Um, the swivels on that end and then I run my five feet out to a clip and the clip the clip goes on the spoon you can make these yourself you can also buy them fish fishing addiction gear uh, sells them pre-made up in several different links you can order them on their site they're just a few bucks uh, if you don't have the time to tie them that's a great option um, so those are the jets I'm running uh, in conjunction with my body beats and then um, spoons that i'm running um we are running the michigan stinger scorpion spoons um they're they're small uh, the smallest ones they make we're running the yek y11 spoons uh they have a little bit different action and there's days that these outperform the scorpion spoons by a bunch and uh, then we're running the <clears throat> the bad mos and we run them in the small and then as the water warms up and the fish get a little deeper We'll start adding in the standard size, uh, the larger, uh, the larger bad mo, which is about an inch longer, roughly. Um, we'll start using those, um, and we'll run those behind uh, the jets, um, and then we also will run a 50 jet, which is a true trip, <clears throat> um, and it's just larger and dives deeper, a little faster. Uh, we'll run these off the corners or out the back of the boat. Uh, same exact setup as the 40 jet it releases uh, same leader we run a five foot uh, same same style um, these just get it down I prefer the rattle of a jet to a dipsy diver for a spoon now if I'm running body baits like you know like the hit stick 11 or a j7 um, I'll run that behind a jet or a dipsy either one we have good success with both uh, we'll run spoons behind dipsies as well. Uh, they do catch fish. So, but I prefer it on a jet. Now, if you're going to add worms into your mix um, and you want to run it with spoons and with body baits at faster speeds, um, there are these items here called a spoon harness. So it's basically a spoon with a worm harness behind it. So you can put your crawler on here just like you would a standard worm harness. And uh, I will run this behind uh, my 50 jets or behind Dipsy Divers. And there are days this outperforms just a standard spoon or just a body bait. They just want that tail. So I'm running a full crawler on these. Um, and there are days they work very well. Um, and if you want to run a spinner harness at speed with jets and body baits at, you know, two plus miles an hour, you have to go to willow blades. So the willow blades are the long skinny blades. Um, I like to run double willow harnesses. It's a big presentation, especially as the fish start getting deeper. Um, these big long presentations uh, start to do really well when the fish are getting down, you know, 30, 35 feet uh, suspended over deeper water. Uh, these perform very well. So we'll go to the double, double willows and uh, we're just running those on our same leader um, I just tie them all up very short uh, just like a spoon harness and uh, we're putting them on the end of that leader and these work great it's a way to put a worm into your presentation um, it, it's it does a great job um, you cannot run Colorado blades uh, you know the cupped Colorado blades at two miles an hour they they, they st what happens is they stop spinning the actual spinner stops spinning. It's going so fast that now that your whole harness starts to go around in a circle and it isn't performing anymore. That's what blowout is. So you, you must go to a sleeker, more slender spoon type spinner to get the spinner action at a faster speed. 
So once you're going to speed up and you want to work worms in combination with body baits and go fast, this is what you've got to switch to for worm harnesses. Double willows or spoon harnesses um, is what I switch to and uh, they work very well. Um, if I'm going to run, uh, if these are performing really well, outperforming spoons, and I want to run more of the spoon harnesses or the willow blades, that's when I go to my tadpoles. And uh, I'll run a number two, typically, behind. Uh, if we're getting in deeper water, we'll run the mag or, you know, whatever, whatever size we need to get to the depth. And uh, same thing, your five-foot leader to these worm harnesses. Um, these work great. I, I kind of tend the worms. I like the tadpole better. Uh, spoons, I like the jets better. So once we get the worms going, I kind of go to the tadpole and let the action of this lure bring in the fish, not just uh, not including the rattle. It seems to work better in my experience. Um, so those are the the. The ways that I'm combining these, we also work into the mix uh, Dipsy Divers, of course, and I run, um, you know, some people run their Dipsy Divers um, with the line tied right on, some run a snubber, everybody has their opinion. Um, I have chosen to run a clear snubber on mine, so the snubber goes right on the Dipsy itself. Um, it's a stretch mechanism. I have found that with so many inexperienced customers I get on my boat, um, this helps them to get the fish in without losing it. They haven't quite learned sometimes the right speed to reel, how to handle the fish when it gets close to the boat, um, the long leader and lifting the pole up high, you know, it, there's a learning curve to that. It takes some time and experience to, to get good at it. So um, I have found that I lose less fish using a snubber. It does also uh, make it more difficult to know if you have a small fish. Um, so, you know, it has pros and cons. But uh, as far as getting the fish in the boat, it has improved our success rate uh, for the inexperienced clientele that, that I have on the boat. Um, I've learned to read them pretty well. Um, I, I don't really hardly ever run one by itself. So when you're running two or three next to each other, it's pretty easy to tell when you have a fish. Just by line angle going into the water, um, it, it makes it pretty simple. So that is uh, a summary of how, which jets I use, uh, what spoons we're running, and, and how we're mixing body baits, worms, spoons, uh, shallow divers um, on on the pork chop express this is this is what we do um, we run a pretty successful program uh, combining these items so give this a try um, hopefully it'll help you in uh, catching more walleye tight lines and catch you next time hey!